If you're building an Electron application, chances are you're going to need to store some data. But with so many options out there, how do you know which type of data storage to use? That's the exact question we'll be answering today. And by the end of this video, you will have a simple framework to help you make an optimal decision for your project every single time. While there are dozens of libraries and APIs, your data needs will almost always fall into one of four main categories. And if you can figure out which category your data belongs to, the choice becomes extremely obvious. These categories are simple user settings, core application data, temporary UI, and files and exports. Now let's break them down one by one and I'll tell you when to use each. Let's begin with something every app probably needs, which is simple user settings, such as the user's preferred theme and whether the user wants the app to launch on startup. For such simple key value data, we do not need a database. A JSON file would be much better. Since Electron is built on top of Node.js, you have full access to Node's powerful file system module, and you could absolutely build a solution to save that JSON file yourself. But since the paths for storing app data differ from Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, if you're trying to build a multi-platform application, you might find yourself forced to write a lot of boilerplate. The good news is that there is a lightweight zero configuration library that solves this problem. It's called Electron Store. You can think of it as a super powered JavaScript object that automatically saves itself into a JSON file, which makes it perfect for any user preferences or simple application data. Now let's talk about something more exciting. Core application data, the actual data that powers your app. Imagine you're building a to-do list or a music player or an inventory manager. You're not just dealing with simple keys and values anymore. You're dealing with structured data that has relationships. A user has many to-dos. An album has many songs. A product has a supplier. Now imagine trying to manage thousands of these records in a single JSON file. That sounds like a nightmare, right? A slow, buggy nightmare. But luckily, powerful databases do exist. And in the Electron ecosystem, the most widely used and robust option is SQLite. Now to interact with SQLite, you have a few great library options. My default recommendation, especially for performance and simplicity is better SQLite 3. It's incredibly fast because its API is synchronous, which is perfect for Electron's backend main process. Also, it is simple, direct, and has no extra dependencies. For most Electron applications, Better SQLite 3 is a solid choice. However, if your application has more complex needs, there are other options. For example, if your application absolutely requires asynchronous database operations, the original SQLite 3 library is the classic choice. It uses a callback based async API, which might be a better fit if you're integrating it into a larger async workflow. And if you need a more powerful way to build complex SQL queries without writing raw SQL, a query builder like Knex is a fantastic tool. It works on top of SQLite 3 and gives you a clean JavaScript based way to conduct your queries. And finally, if you're building a very large application, especially with TypeScript, and you want a full object relational mapping features like models and repositories, then a mature ORM like type ORM or SQLize is the way to go. These are much heavier and have a steeper learning curve, but they provide a powerful structure for complex projects. Now, while SQLite itself is probably the right choice for 90% of Electron applications, it's not the only technology out there. Let's quickly take a look at three other options and when you might consider them. Your first alternative is indexed DB. This is a NoSQL database that's built directly into the browser. Because it runs in the renderer process, you might consider it if your app is very web-like and manages most of its data on the front end. And you strongly prefer a JavaScript 
native no SQLite style API. The next two alternatives are when your primary need is data synchronization. If your goal is to build an offline first app that syncs with a server, the classic open source solution is PouchDB. It's a JavaScript database designed to perfectly replicate data with a remote couch database. If you want a battle-tested open source syncing solution, PouchDB is a fantastic choice. Your other major alternative is a modern database like Realm. Realm is incredibly powerful and its killer feature is real-time synchronization. If you're building a complex application that needs to instantly sync data between your desktop app, a web app, and a mobile app, Realm is specifically designed for that job. And no matter which one you choose, any heavy database operations must be run in Electron's main process. If you run a heavy database query in the renderer, your entire application will freeze. By keeping the database in the main process and communicating with IPC, your app stays fast and responsive. All right, we have our user settings handled and our core data in our robust database. Now let's move on to talking about temporary UI state. Imagine a user typing a long message when they accidentally refresh they would be very disappointed to find their message gone. And so you would probably want to save their progress, but writing to your main SQLite database on every keystroke is overkill and it's not efficient at all. This is what I call non-critical UI state. It's data that's tied to the user interface and not to the core logic of your application. For this, an excellent and super simple tool is the browser's built-in local storage. You might also hear about its cousin session storage. They are nearly identical, but session storage is cleared the moment the user closes the app, while local storage persists across app launches until it's manually cleared. So the simple rule of thumb is to ask yourself, does the user expect this to be here when they reopen the app tomorrow? For things like an unsaved draft, the position of a panel, or which tab was last open, the answer? is probably yes. The user expects the app to feel the same as when they left it. For those cases, local storage is the right choice. But what if you have a multi-step wizard? If the user closes the app halfway through, you probably want it to reset, which means it would be a perfect job for session storage. Both session storage and local storage are incredibly simple key value APIs. And most importantly, they run entirely in the renderer process, which is perfect for UI specific data that doesn't need to clutter your main database. And that brings us to our final category. What if you're not saving settings or database records? What if you're just working with files? Maybe your app needs to export a report as a CSV or save a project in its own custom format or write a debug log file. Don't overthink this and try to force raw file data into a database. For this, the solution is the most direct and powerful one we have, which is the built-in Node.js file system module. Never forget that your Electron app is a full Node.js application, which means you have native low-level access to the computer's file system. So use the file system module anytime you need to read or write files directly on the user's disk. And just like with SQLite, for both security and performance, you should always handle file operations in main process and trigger them from your UI using inter-process communication. And that's it, that's our framework. It's a simple but powerful way to think about your data. Let's recap one more time. For simple user settings, your default choice should be Electron Store. For core application data, you should almost always start with SQLite and run it in the main process. For temporary UI state, use the browser's built-in local storage. And for working directly with files, go to the Node.js FS module, also in the main process. If you start by asking which of these four categories your data fits into, you will always choose the right tool for the job and build 
better, faster, and more professional electron applications. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something new. If you had, please give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and consider becoming a channel member. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye.